Welcome, movie fans, to another episode of Hollow Victories, right here on the internet. And I gotta say, Michael, the internet is a lot different than Sonic the Hedgehog said it was. It is. I'm your host, Matt Presents, uh, here with my goon co-host... Did I say Mackle Jordan last time we did Space Jam? <laughs> Maybe? Uh, that was a live-action episode. Yeah, I you def- can be Mackle B Jordan. Mac- okay, I'm Mackle B Jordan. Yeah, th- there we go. <laughs> uh, and today we got the matchup of sequels that decided to take their franchise to the digital realm, and like really, really, really show off all the intellectual properties they own. Uh, it's Wreck-It Ralph 2, Ralph Breaks the Internet, versus Space Jam, A New Legacy. Yeah, I mean, I'm rewording what you just said, but they decided to make a commercial instead of a movie. Uh, Michael, I guess I'm gonna make you introduce, uh, Wreck-It Ralph, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Alrighty, well, Ralph Breaks the Internet, released in... Um, 2018, directed by Rich Moore and Phil Johnston, although I don't know what that really means when it comes to some Disney movies, like how much involvement did they actually have with making it? Who knows? So the movie follows Ralph and uh, Penelope. Is it Penelope? Penelope. Yeah. From, you know, they're they're just hanging out, they're buddies after the first one. They're they're getting along well. Really, the it takes... You just spend a lot of time showing the two characters hang out which uh i mean good good enough idea i guess however due to something that ralph does in Penelope's game sugar rush the wheel to the game the steering wheel to the game is broken and they have to go on to the internet to ebay to get a new one so they venture into the internet and they come across a game that Penelope likes more than her game and even though her entire plot in the first movie was one to be accepted in her game and world uh, she just kind of wants to go to this new game now and completely disregard everything from the first movie. Um, and Ralph's really insecure because she's his one friend. Although it's kind of fucked up that he hasn't, like, is Felix not a friend at this point? I feel like, I feel like they kind of buried the hatchet, but I guess not. And yeah, Ralph tries to directly sabotage her happiness for his own happiness, and he learns at the end of the movie that you shouldn't do that because that's not what friends do. Uh, I don't like this movie too much, but there's some things to say about it. Matt, how do you feel about this movie? Here's the thing. I I, I think I kind of said this when we, we talked about the first Wreck-It Ralph, although that video is definitely coming out after this one. <laughs> I, Wreck-It Ralph is a movie that I was, like, sort of anticipating a sequel to. I, I was sort of like, oh yeah, you could do a good Wreck-It Ralph sequel, and this is not that. This is, I don't know, almost what you would expect from, like, a bad Wreck-It Ralph sequel. Like, I don't I don't think this is, like, the most horrendous thing ever, but it's definitely like, oh yeah, that's, that's pretty typical of a bad sequel. Everything that happens in this is pretty typical of a bad sequel. Um... There's some some pretty egregious stuff in there, but not, not not too much. I agree with you that it does like sort of counteract some of the, some of what was going on in the first movie. Like in the first movie, it was a whole big thing. Like you do not leave your game. You do not go turbo. And then and then in this game, in this movie, it's like, nah, it's totally cool that Vanellope left her game and and decided to be in this fucking like GTA thing. Right. It's like, especially at the, like, near the end of the movie, her glitch interacts with a virus, which nearly destroys the entire game and everyone in it. And they're just cool with that by the end of the movie. Like, yeah, no, uh, we're we're okay if we're risking that again. And I I get it, the virus was Ralph's fault. It's like, oh, Ralph's not going to do that again. Doesn't mean a virus is never going to make it into the game again. Ralph did that very easily. Someone else could do that. Well, well, uh, you see, one of the characters within the game put Vanellope in the code, so now it's, like, not a problem. Did they, did they say that? I, I missed How that. How the fuck? How the fuck did a 
character in the game write another character into the code of the game like without the developer's permission do the ve developers have the rights to use Vanellope von Schweiss from from Sugar Rush in their GTA game uh that that just raises so many fucking questions here's my I've got two major issues with this movie. There's a lot of little things, but my two, like, I'd say my two biggest problems with the movie is, one, the replacement, uh, it's like the replacement of the video game characters for Disney characters and how they're used. Because in Wreck-It Ralph, the game characters are there. Most of them are shown in the trailer, but it, it, it really kept the focus where it needed to be throughout. It really did. The, the video game characters were a fun appearance and they didn't get in the way at all. In this movie, the Disney characters is a lot less fun because it was kind of neat seeing Nintendo and Sega characters in a Disney movie. That was kind of the novelty. Shit like House of Mouse existed way before this. Like, they've been doing that shit for such a long time, you know? Uh, so that novelty wasn't as good. And it also absolutely gets in the way of the story in this movie. Like, they will pause for extended periods of time to show off this shit. I don't know. I like I I was under the impression that like way more of this film was going to be like dumb Disney pandering cuz it's all they showed in the trailers. The trailers were just full of like, "Oh, look, we got all the Disney characters in this." I think they shot themselves in the foot with that advertise cuz they're like, I "Oh, think they did like, that with it, the first it, movie too." It it felt like they were like over like, like it felt like the emphasis of this movie was going to be on showing a bunch of Disney characters and really that's contained to like one particular section of the movie and I don't think that section needed to be there I don't think that section was necessary but at least it was contained I don't know it, it comes back at the end and it also influenced a lot of the film's plot We'll, we'll, we'll talk about a movie that doesn't, I think does that a lot worse than this movie does, but, uh, I, I don't think it was as bad as I was led to believe. It is pretty contained. My other big problem with it is that, um, the message that it has between Ralph and Vanellope is not a horrible one. I don't think this was the movie to do it with, but if you're going to, I think Mitzi called this up when we're watching it, and I agree, it is way too fucking obvious up to the point where Ralph is unlikable in the movie, and I feel like if they could have had that message and toned it the fuck down a little bit, I should actually care that this is happening between them, but they're just, they do not have a likable dynamic in this movie, I don't feel, because they focus too much on the obsessive side, and it's like, I see what they're going for, I don't think it, I don't think, that, again, don't think this is a movie for it, but I, I Rick and Ralph doesn't really feel like like that's where you should tell that story but okay if you're going to there's a way to make it work i feel and yeah it's just like it's very obvious what it's going for very early on and as a result it's because it's so focused on its message it's like it doesn't want to it wants you to see the relationship as toxic and it doesn't want you to like the relationship anymore and i feel like that was a huge fucking mistake i i almost feel like Ralph in this movie is almost like the opposite of how he was at the start of the first movie. When in the first movie he was sick of how like repetitive and and like he was doing just the same thing over and over all the time. And then in this one, he loves the way things are. He wants things to stay the exact same and doesn't want change at all. Meanwhile, Vanellope is sort of going through what Ralph was going through in the first movie. Like, she's bored of her game, she's tired of doing the same stuff over and over, and granted it's a little different, because Ralph in the first game was, like, explicitly discriminated against by the people in his game, but it's that same, like, oh, I'm tired of doing the same old routine every single day. Yeah. Well, I mean, that Vanellope had the same dilemma as him in the first movie, that was kind of the point, too. Yeah. I, I it kinda. It, I don't know, it's... I don't, I think you could make a sequel, 
to wreck it Ralph. I feel like you almost want to like, I mean, you know, Chris pitched pitch some interesting ideas about maybe like being like, okay, what about if they move to home consoles or something like that? I mean, at least that would be exploring the game side of it more. Maybe you could find a story with that, but I don't know. I, I have a feeling that just somewhere down the road with this movie, because there was like the promise of having Mario in the sequel and all that. And like, clearly like the idea they had for a sequel was not what happened. Yeah, I feel like there are fewer video game characters in this one than there were in the first one. Sonic gets to speak more though. <laughs> because very quickly they like get sucked into the internet and then that's that i do have a question about about sonic in this okay because it's a uh, fucking jason what's his face roger craig smith yeah him jason griffith griffith is the one who voiced him before roger okay had he done an arcade game at this point uh probably um, because they had, I don't know if he voiced in the, in the game, but there was like an Olympics game that was an arcade game that cut Mario, that they cut Mario from it and it was just Sonic Olympics. Sonic does a lot of arcade shit, to be honest. Like there's, they, they still do stuff. He was also like, there was like, they were doing stuff at like a theme park too with his voice right when Roger started voicing. I don't know if they did an arcade game there with it, but. Oh, I, I, I know about the, the theme park thing. Cause like. His voice was, like, kind of slowed down, and pe <laughs> that was, like, the first time a lot of people were hear hearing Roger Craig Smith as Sonic. Right. And they were like, what's with this voice? It's so deep. Yeah, like, I don't know if he had an arcade game or not, because honestly, if you wanted to do arcade Sonic, you'd go for classic Sonic, but but they were clearly just going on what's, what's more recognizable. You said Sonic the Fighters is in the first game, right? <laughs> Yeah, and that's definitely like you not can the... briefly, you briefly see a Sonic the Fighters arcade cabinet. Yeah. So so they could have had Fang at any point in these movies. Yeah, Tails makes a a cameo on like a like a drawn on the wall, and Eggman's in there a lot too. Granted, he never actually speaks in either of the movies. His mouth moves in the first movie, but Mike Pollock is not doing a voice for him. Which is weird, like, he, he voices in, like, a lot of stuff. He was in, like, those Video Brinquedo movies. I know. <laughs> like, I feel like, I feel like Disney could have paid him to be in this movie, come on. Yeah. Let's talk about what happens in the movie. Because it is, I, I had this thought in the first movie of, like, the way they've set up this universe is causing glitches that would not happen in the real world. But that's, like... A hundred times so in this movie, where they're on the internet. Right. Also, there's just, like, a lot of, like, product placement for websites on the internet. I so guess it's nice that they used... It's, it's, it's nice that they used actual websites, but, like, at the same time, I don't know. This kind of feels pandering. This kind of feels like the small bits I've seen of the Emoji movie... I refuse to watch the Emoji movie, but, like, what I've seen of it, they do a lot of this shit. The Emoji movie's thing with Dropbox feels very similar to this movie's thing with eBay, where they keep mentioning eBay, they talk about what you can do on eBay, they describe how eBay works. And gets himself an e-boy. He gets an e-boy. You, you look that character up and you're gonna see that character if you type in e-boy. It's just gonna be the character from Ralph Breaks the Internet. Only image yeah. results. It's an exhausting movie, but it's not like, it's really not the worst because it's like, okay, it's still very well animated. You get a little bit of these characters you like, but I, again, they just feel off. I think Sarah Silverman did a way worse job voicing Penelope in this one, but that might just be because they make her sing. Ralph, I want to like, but he's just like, the clinginess to him is like, yeah, you wanted to make him, they wanted to show off what a, like a toxic relationship is like, but the don't do that with these two characters that we like. And if you're going to do it, don't make it like so he make, don't make him so blatantly in the wrong. You know, sometimes people do need to learn from their mistakes. They need to learn to let something go that they didn't realize was on the table. That happens. People move on and you have to accept that. But it's like the way they went about it was just like so fucking obnoxious to me. Yeah. Yeah. It should not get in the way of me liking Ralph as a character. It should not get in the way of me liking Penelope as a character. Yeah, I I, I definitely like Ralph a lot less in this movie than I did. He, f he feels like such a loser in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> like, I all that, all that feels mean a little bit, but, like, 
God, he, he feels so different than he did in the first movie. He feels so much more dweeby, so much more... Hey, oh, dude, I, I, this kid is my best friend, and that is the only thing I am holding on to, right? That is the only thing keeping me going, is that I am friends with a child. Yeah, and on top of that, like like I said, I, the end of the first movie, his friendship with Vene- Vanellope was not the only goal. It was something that became part of his goal. Because he met her and they formed a bond together. But, like, he also, like, his relationship with Felix was important in the first movie. His relationship with the other people in his game was important in the first one. Like, being accepted by everyone was important in the first movie. They could have expanded upon that. It feels like for a brief period of time when they're at Tappers together, they are going to expand on that. But that's a thing to talk about. You like Felix and uh, Jane Lynch from the first movie? (laughs) Well, I got news for you. You, you said this to me before we watched the movie, and I'm like, no, you're right. It feels like there was supposed to be a subplot with them that just didn't happen. Yeah, it, it once Felix and Jane Lynch leave the movie, they do not show up again until the very end. I mean, like, the final scene, when Ralph is given another recap. Yeah, they 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 adopt all of the Sugar Rush kids, and it feels like we should be getting, like three, four scenes in the movie where it, like, cuts back to them, like, trying to teach the Sugar Rush kids to be better people. And then you get to the ending where they have taught the Sugar Rush kids to be better people. And if you want to merge the two stories together, take out the fucking Disney princesses in the climactic scene and have it be them, you know? Yeah, yeah, that that would be, like, a good place to throw them back in at the end. And and it would get rid of the stupid fucking Disney princess thing. I would be okay with that idea on its own. Because there was, like, there was, like, even this popular thing going around. I forget what it was called. It was, like, pocket princesses or something. Where someone just, it wasn't official. Someone drew the characters just hanging out. I get people want to see that. I get that's, like, a fun thing for people. Make it its own thing. Don't throw it in the middle of fucking Wreck-It Ralph 2. The only connection they have with that is, like, trying to do, like, make it connect to Vanellope's story. They're also being critical of stuff that they are, like, more responsible for than oh, any yeah, other studio no. on the fucking, in the fucking world. I, self-loathing Disney is my least favorite. Yeah, like, if you want to be critical of these things, fine, just make a good movie. You've done that. You've done, like, you did that with Tangled. You did that with Frozen. Yeah, it was kind of lame when it came up in Frozen. It is outright obnoxious in this movie. Yeah. They're being condescending, even though you're the reasons this is a... You're, like, you're not the only reason, but you're one of the biggest... I think you are the biggest reason. You, you You are 20 years late on criticizing yourself. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even, like, Disney has done it, like, done this before, and they, it was kind of obnoxious when they did it in the past. Like, what was that movie called? Enchanted? Enchanted, yeah. I had fun with that movie when I was younger, but, it, it like, when it comes to the whole, we're breaking the tropes, we're doing, like, it's, like, really bad <laughs> itself on the back in that movie. And that was, like, and that was almost 20 years ago at this point. Well, it wasn't probably not 20 years, like, 10, 15 years at this point, but... But yeah, even that, like, even that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was the 2010s. 2000, or the, the 2000s. 2007, so... About 15 Yeah, years. 15, 15 years. You know they made a sequel to that that went straight to Disney Plus? And it was, like, last year. <laughs> yeah, there was a straight to Disney Plus sequel to that. What the fuck was that about? Um, should we talk about who's in this movie? Yeah. Because we did kind of... We did kind of skip over that when we talked about Wreck-It Ralph. Just because we're like, yeah, most of the same people are going to be in the the sequel. John C. Riley is Wreck-It Ralph. Who's like, honestly, probably a better actor than he gets credit for. Yeah. I like John C. Riley, And oh, he's I think really good he at Magnolia. Well in the first Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah. Oh yeah, he was in Magnolia. I don't think this, I don't even think it's his, I mean, it's kind of his fault. In this movie, because they have him really giddy and laughy in a lot of scenes. Like, I don't really like that. But at the same time, the script's really not helping him in this. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I, I like him in the first movie. And, like, I don't know. It's not even that I think he gives a bad performance in this. I just don't like Ralph as a character in the sequel. Yeah. I do think Sarah Silverman's a little worse in this one. I don't know. I think the voice just got a... I think she had a harder time doing the voice this time around. 
the glorious return of Sarah Silverman, <laughs> who previously appeared in Book of Henry. And more on that later, too. <laughs> I, I agree with you. Like, she... I, I like her as Vanellope in the first movie. I think she does a good job with Vanellope in the first movie. And I don't think she does... Absolutely. I don't think she does an awful job in this movie. I, but it, it definitely... Like, I, I see why you would find her more obnoxious in this film. I think it's more the... Again, I think it's more down to the writing. I think it's more I don't really like this character quite as much. Yeah. But... I don't think it's like, I would agree, I don't think it's like god-awful compared to the first one, but I, I do feel like she kind of had a harder time with the voice this time. Uh, and two, they, they just like have her do things with that voice that that character isn't meant to do. She should not have a fucking musical number. She really should not have a fucking musical number. Yeah. Yeah, you're correct. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't hate the musical number. <laughs> uh, that was like one of the worst parts for me. I don't think Sarah Silverman did particularly well, but I think it's, like, a decent song, at least. Uh, Gal Gadot as Shank. She is an actress that I just have Gal not formed Gadot. an opinion on. I don't, like... I didn't see the Wonder Woman movies. I have... I, I don't think I've seen her in anything outside of this. But I know she's, like, a really big actor now. But everything she chooses to be in is, like, the last thing I want to watch. <laughs> Honestly, it, pe people have, like, kind of turned on her just, like, as a person for, like, some of the shit she's done in real life. Ooh. I couldn't, I don't want to, I, I, I don't know how to elaborate on that. I don't know exactly what it is. I just know people don't really like her, like, as a, as a person. I gotta say, I didn't, I didn't realize it was Gal Gadot in this, <laughs> as, as Shank, as the, the leader in the the gta game i kind of like this character honestly uh, it's not that it's not a terrible character but i feel like they should have had her in more of the movie like it's another thing that you could have taken the disney princesses I, out with like okay because like she she has like the scene there with the chase which was a fun scene to be honest i kind of didn't i did not hate that scene but then also like having the cute cutesy like Mario Kart character in a more gritty GTA game that was that was cute I liked that they have like the next scene that they're in together is the scene where they're bonding where she's kind of Vanellope's kind of like venting about her and Ralph and her life you know and it just feels like there should be something in between those two scenes to me yeah i here here's my thing with like the GTA game and we we did kind of talk about this like, all the characters in the GTA game just look like Disney characters. Yeah. And it's like, if you really, if you really wanted to, like, emphasize that this, like, this was, like, a dark, gritty game, make the characters look more like they're in, like, a GTA game or something. Make them look different. Don't make them look like Disney characters. I kind of, my, one of my only cri critiques of the first movie, and that video will be out after this, is I said that Felix, while they did get a lot of, like, the Nintendo aesthetic down, I, I feel like they still gave him, like, the Disney hair, Disney eyes. I wish they would have, like, been a little bit more stylized with him. But, like, looking at what they did with the GTA, I mean, Felix is looking really good right now. Because <laughs> they did at least make changes to him. They did, like... He is a different looking Disney character, even though he has some of those, like, traits in the design. Plus, that was pretty early in the time time where they were using this look i think tangled invented it and then maybe bolt did and then it just kind of kept they just kept kind of fucking copying and pasting it after that yeah i i th i i'll give felix in the first wreck at ralph a little more leeway but like this is supposed to be them showing up in a completely different world make the characters in that world look different and they did even make a fucking joke about it to an extent with, like, the online players, where they actually, they, they had a little bit of fun with that. You pointed it out. They're, it's like, they're laggy, they're, they look like, they look like characters that you would see in, like, an MMO, you know? Yeah, I, I do think it's funny that, like, this, this is, full, full credits of Ralph Breaks the Internet, there are online players in this game, and they are laggy. Like, they're, they're, there's clearly, like frames that are missing in their animation and i'm like oh that's kind of cute that's kind of funny <laughs> like their internet isn't that great no <laughs>
Oh, you know who they're probably regretting casting in this movie now? I doubt they care. Disney's casted so many controversial people. <laughs> uh, Colleen Ballinger uh, voices herself in a brief mo- in a brief scene. Out of all the fucking YouTubers they could bring, they bring in fucking Miranda Sims. <laughs> um, I guess that's a popular one with the kids, so it makes sense. But oh, that that like that hurt. <laughs> that hurt me. <laughs> Bill Hader's in this. I like this character. It's one of the few characters I liked. I I did too, honestly. I I think Bill Hader is like kind of like the redeeming character in this movie the one character i i i kind of like he's given a good performance he's like this spam like pop-up spam bot thing and, and I he's like not him. like completely unlikable in this but he uh also is really sketchy <laughs> and i think it's funny that they have a character that's sketchy yeah in in a disney movie Jack McBrayer as as Fix It Felix, he sure wasn't in a lot of this movie, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, he does fine in the scenes they gave him. And Jane Lynch as as the other one. You know what's weird? What? Um, I I looked it up because I wasn't I didn't see him his name in the credits, and I didn't see when I just googled the cast, he didn't show up, and it's listed here. Bill Hader does voice Spanley, but he was uncredited for it. How? What? He's a big actor. Less big then, probably, but I don't know. He had Inside Out at that point. And he voiced a pretty big character. Like, Spamley's in a lot of this movie. Are you sure? Uh, it says. I'm double checking you on this one because I don't believe you. Go ahead. What? Okay. Yeah, okay. He went uncredited. The fuck? Did he. Was that his choice or did they. Because it doesn't... Why would the filmmakers decide not to credit him? I mean... I, the the only time I've, I've heard of something like this before is... Uh, incidentally, an actor who will appear in, in our second movie tonight. Uh, Don Cheadle decided not to be credited in Ocean's Eleven because he wouldn't get top billing. Huh. That is weird. Maybe Bill Hader just really fucking hated this movie. Yeah, maybe this is like a, like like a, 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 a Alan Smithy thing, where he's just like, nah, don't this this does not represent my my artistic intent. Uh, don't credit me on this one. Uh, anyone else worth bringing up? Like, of course, I got the Roger Craig Smith, the man, the myth, the legend himself. Uh, there's all the Disney princesses. Like, some of them are reprised. Oh. All- some of them are obviously the almost, actors are dead, so yeah, almost all of them are voiced by their original voice actress. There's even I know there's one from like the way way old days that that has the same voice. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe maybe I'm thinking of a uh, Kingdom Hearts. Maybe there should have been a Kingdom Hearts reference in this movie. Anthony Daniels does reprise his role as as C-3PO because Anthony Daniels insists on being (laughs) C-3PO in everything. Like, like all the other Star Wars actors are like, oh, like this fucking computer game, who cares? Get a sound alike. Anthony Daniels is like, no, I am C-3PO. Do not let anyone else voice C-3PO. I am (laughs) C-3PO. Uh, you know who else is like that? And he's not in this movie, although he very well could have been. Pumbaa's voice actor. Voiced him in Kingdom Hearts. Voiced him in these, like, PSAs. Voiced him in the TV show. Nathan Lane only did the TV show for the pilot, and then it was given to someone else. Uh, he voices... I forget the actor's name, but he voices Pumbaa in everything. Like, fucking everything. There was, like, a, I remember there was, like, this, like stage thing that he went up and like where they were singing Hukuna Matata and Nathan Lane did not show up for that but he showed up to do Pumbaa <laughs> so they just got someone else to do <laughs> to moan. so Pumbaa is his Pumbaa is his child one single actor I do want to shout out uh Ed O'Neill plays uh the owner of the arcade uh Mr. Litwak uh, of course, well known for starring in the greatest anime of all time, Married with Children. <laughs> 
this this is an extremely old meme on my channel somehow some one person one person somehow found my channel from the search term Married with Children is best anime. I have never talked about Married with Children. I have never talked about anime. Somehow someone found my channel from the search term Married with Children is best anime. <laughs> I don't know that I have anything else to say about Wreck-It Ralph 2. Uh, we could talk about the viral videos. That I th that, that Ralph where it's it's just Ralph inserting himself into already popular YouTube videos. Really lame. I, yeah, yeah, really lame. Until until the after credit scene. The after credit scene is hilarious. I disagree. I don't know. Just a, this is a lame sequel. Yeah, and there's things about it that are okay. You know, there's things about it that, there's things about it that are bearable. <laughs> um, I like I said, animation is nice. Uh, you get a couple of good character moments, but really not a lot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, it's just we've also watched worse stuff than this. You know, just like in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, yeah. I did. This is like, it's lame, but it like a lot of the stuff we watch for this show is lame. <laughs> like. Yeah. I don't... I, I This is not the worst thing I have ever seen. It was honestly not nearly as bad as I was expecting it to be. Mm. Yeah, when I, when we started this, I said, like, both of these aren't that... aren't that terrible. Like, they're just kind of more boring than anything. And I will say, on a rewatch... On a rewatch, this one was about the same, and then the other one was a lot rougher. Yeah, yeah... Uh, it's not as bad as I expect. It is certainly not a sentiment I can share with another movie. W would you like to get into it? All right. So, Space Jam 2, A New Legacy. Actually, it's just called Space Jam, A New Legacy. There's no two. So, Space Jam, A New Legacy, uh, is a film from 2021, which makes it one of the more recent entries for this show, uh, wherein... Professional basketball player LeBron James is recruited by Warner Brothers because they want to digitally add his likeness into all of their movies. And they are egged on by The Algorithm, played by one Mr. Don Cheadle. When uh, Mr. James refuses to do this, I'm sorry, King James. They insist on calling him King James in this movie because he is going to authorize a new translation of the Bible into English. When uh, King James refuses to do this, uh, the algorithm sucks him into the server verse, a, a universe of all of uh, Warner Brothers' major intellectual properties, and sends him to the cartoon world to meet Bugs Bunny, and uh, Bugs Bunny is desperate to get the Looney Tunes back together. Well, uh, LeBron James, along with Bugs Bunny, go all across the server-verse, tracking down the old Looney Tunes characters and getting them together to play a basketball game against Algae Rhythm, and LeBron James's son, Dom James, uh, who... who against his father's wishes. His father wants him to be a basketball player, but he wants to develop video games. And so the Ooh. big climactic basketball game takes place inside of his vi basketball video game with, with all of the famous Warner Brothers characters in attendance to watch. <sighs> Michael, what'd you think of this movie? When I watched it when it first came out, I didn't like it, but I also was just kind of like, I, I kind of just had it on and was like, I maybe I was multitasking. Um, I don't know. I don't really remember, but I watched it. I thought it was like, whatever. I didn't like it. I didn't think I'd like it. It, it was definitely didn't live up to the first one in terms of just doing being like a dumb, fun movie, but I didn't hate it. You know, I, I was just like, yeah, this is, this is bad, but it's kind of like, you know, it's like a five out of 10. Sitting down and just having to rewatch the whole thing, I realize how bad the pacing of this movie is. 
it's like on top of it just being everything that I hate about Hollywood and what movies can be, it's a very cynical production where at least Ralph Breaks the Internet had a message. At least it had something it was trying to do. This is no, this like shows very little care for the Looney Tunes, shows very little care for the characters. It feels like it is what it's criticizing with Don Cheadle's character a lot. It's like a hypocritical movie, but on top of that, on top of all of that, it takes for fucking ever. <laughs> By the time in this movie that he, they are recruiting the Looney Tunes, the basketball has already been happening in the first movie. The first movie is like an hour and ten minutes. This is almost two hours. It did not need to be this long. You mentioned that you think it might be like, it kind of felt like it was self-aware at points, and I agree, it does kind of feel a little self-aware at points. I feel like they understand the appeal to Space Jam to an extent, but they don't know how to recreate it. But they have 30 minutes of emotional buildup between LeBron and his son, like giving them an arc in this movie. And it's just like, it's not interesting. It's not well done. I'm rambling. Go ahead. It's not even his real son. I said there were hints at self-awareness right. beneath the surface because there's just something sort of deeply ironic about the plot of Space Jam 2 being an algorithm designed to, like, generate profit for Warner Brothers going, hey, what if we just take this professional basketball player and shove him in with the Looney Tunes and do a second Space Jam? It's one of those movies that feels like it knows that it shouldn't exist. Almost a wink to the audience that it knows that it shouldn't exist, but at the same time, it still fucking exists. Right. I I feel this way... I feel this way about, uh, the first Jurassic World. Because they've got, like, the Indominus Rex in there, and the Indominus Rex is just this, like, stupid spectacle dinosaur that's gonna destroy them all that should not exist... And it, and it it almost feels like they're, the message of the movie is just like, yeah, Jurassic World shouldn't exist. <laughs> right. I think that, like, in a weird sense, it almost feels like it's, like, trying to mimic the Looney Tunes better than the first one did because they do a lot of scenes with, like, the slapstick in it. But I feel like here's the thing. It doesn't successfully emulate Looney Tunes. It's trying, but it doesn't do it very well. And on top of that, it's not creating like this new experience that the original Space Jam did, which was a stupid experience, don't get me wrong, but it was a fun one. There's People remember it fondly for a reason. This sequel exists for a reason. It's like nodded in a lot of directions, but I don't think it actually accomplishes anything it sets out to do. Even though you could argue that this one is trying to be more like Looney Tunes than the first one was. Yeah, I mean, it, it's worth saying, I didn't think this movie was ever going to come out. Because, like, they kept trying to make a Space Jam 2. They kept announcing a Space Jam 2. And nothing ever came of it. For, like, 20 years, nothing ever came of it, except arguably Looney Tunes back in action. But even that was, like, a distinct, no, fuck Space Jam, <laughs> we're doing a respectful Looney Tunes movie. Also, also, side note, fuck you! Fuck you for putting the gremlins in this. <laughs> you know Joe Dante hated Space Jam 1. And I'm sure he hates this... I, I mean, I'm sure Joe Dante never even bothered watching this movie. He shouldn't. No one should. Except us, who are going to review a podcast about it. <laughs> who are going to do a podcast reviewing it. No one should watch this movie. But fuck you for putting the gremlins in there. The only enjoyment I have gotten out of this movie, honestly, the only sincere enjoyment I've gotten out of it, is Rick and Morty jabbing it multiple times despite appearing in it. Like, I, I, it, it, was, it was funny that they did an episode in the most recent season where they murder them, their Space Jam selves. That, that made me <laughs> laugh really hard. I, that was, like, one of my favorite jokes in the entire new season. Every minute here is worth 30 Space Jam cameos. <laughs> and that one was funny, too. That was a really good joke, too. <laughs> God, okay, so compliments to the movie. I can think of a few, not a lot. Put in Wile E. Coyote and, like, the, the cameo scene was stupid. We're like, oh, they're in 
they're in this movie now. They're in this movie now. I think Wile E. Coyote and Roadrunner and Mad Max make sense. I think maybe it would have been better if they didn't literally just take footage from Fury Road. But I mean, uh, if it was the only time they did that, I would have been perfectly fine with that. You know, that's like it's a desert set and it's a run in set. And that makes sense. That is a that is a choice that's actually kind of clever. Putting Granny in the Matrix is fucking stupid. OK, uh, yeah, that's the like I. They they start they start with uh, Coyote and Road Runner in in Fury Road and I'm like that's kind of funny and then every subsequent scene I'm like fuck you fuck you fuck you fuck you I was okay with what they did with Daffy and Porky and uh, DC too which is weird because they go back to DC later in that same montage. But that one was like, okay, you have, like, that's Daffy and Porky's dynamic. Like, at least their modern dynamic being done pretty well. I, I mean, there is, like, there. What one of my favorite classic uh, uh, Looney Tunes cartoons, honestly, is when Daffy is stupor duck. Right. So that scene wasn't great, but it was probably one of the more entertaining scenes of the movie. And then, yeah, it's just the fucking Wonder Woman scene was so fucking lame. I'm sorry. The animation style looked really nice. That was one of the only scenes where they bothered to change the animation style, by the way, um, to reflect the thing that they were trying to satire. Ironically, since they already did DC in the first DC scene, they don't change the art style. They don't even make LeBron look different to match the humans in that world. Yeah. It, it was, like, specifically the 2000s Justice League show, too. Right, and I get why they're not going to change the Looney Tunes art stuff, but why not just change LeBron? Like, I mean, he and he does he t- becomes a live-action character whenever they're in a live-action movie, so why... I, I get, like, it'd be kind of hard to make Bugs Bunny look... Like, you put him in that art style because there's no frame of reference, really, for how Bugs would look in that, since there aren't talking animals and that. I mean, that I know. Maybe I'm fucking wrong, dead wrong about that. I don't know. It just felt like, in some places, they were putting a little bit of the effort in... In some places they weren't. A lot of the artists on this movie did fine. I think for the CG models, most of them looked terrible. I thought Wiley Coyote and Daffy looked. F- I thought they looked pretty good. Everyone else, it wasn't so much that the models were bad, but the textures really didn't work. Bugs looked horrible, in my opinion. Yeah, I kind of liked the 2D animation. I thought the 2D animation was like okay. I even I thought it was kind of a funny. I thought it was kind of a funny gag that, like, when LeBron James, like, smashes into the ground, the, like, mushroom cloud is a basketball going through a hoop. But the once they become CG models, it's like, oh, no, no. Even worse is their fucking opponents and that. The fucking villains, CG villains. Don't they? I don't like the Goon Squad. The Goon Squad are not nearly as well established as the Monstars. Who make a cameo in this movie? I liked their cameo. That was funny. I I did actually like I I, I did enjoy their cameo. I didn't I didn't. It wasn't in your face that. either. It wasn't in your face either. The Looney Tunes get a score and they're like, oh, like that's yeah, that's that's great. That's that's all you need. Um, yeah, I mean they had fun. You know they weren't like they're not like the best characters or anything, but they had you know they were two D animation. They were they were expressive. They were drawn well. Um, they didn't look like fucking uncanny nightmare fuel, which I mean, you could, oh, they're the villain you can make. They, okay. They didn't look cool either. Let me put it that way. And the fact that they were basing them off of like actual people didn't help make it less uncanny. I thought that, yeah, I thought that was all terrible. John Cheadle. I don't like his character at all. I will say he did feel like he was trying in this movie. I guess we'll get to cast him in a bit, but I, there's just so much, I'm jumping all over the place at this one because there's so much to talk about and none of it's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's rare you get a movie where, like, so much of it is bad. Is this bad? It's not an easy way. It, you said it was fascinating, and I agree with you, because it's not even easy to sum up, like, why it's bad, because it's not, like, one e- simple thing you can explain, you know? It's just... Yeah, no, like... Like, I was saying, like, Wreck-It Ralph 2, it's just a bad sequel. I can't say that about this movie. This movie is bad in such bizarre and unique ways. It's exhausting. It's an exhausting movie. There is specific plot points that I can call out. I mean, there's so many of them. Okay, there was, like, a joke that you liked that I hated with the Michael Jordan fake-out. And I get it. I... 
I don't know. I, I guess it like it re- really would it have would it have made the scene better if Michael Jordan actually showed up? Probably not. But it was kind of like I don't, I don't know. I, I guess like it's just most of the jokes in this movie just felt very came off as very lame to me, and that just was another one of them. <laughs> Listen, if this movie hadn't done that, I would have made that joke. <laughs> I would have been like, man, my, Michael Jordan's such a better actor now. He was in uh, <laughs> Black Panther. The fucking Bugs Bunny death. That was so stupid. It wasn't. It wasn't even. He didn't even die. I know. They just like, like we never like saw him die. And then at the end, he's like, I'm back. And it's like, yeah, no shit. You didn't. There was never a moment where you died. It's like, are we? <laughs> I love it when certain properties try to do that like oh yeah no this character is definitely fucking dead there's a fucking part in kingdom hearts 2 where goofy gets like slammed on the head with a rock and he's out and then Sora's like no this can't be happening this can't be happening it's like not gonna fucking kill goofy shut the fuck up (laughs) it's just you're not gonna kill bugs bunny don't even fucking try this all all the don Cheadle's like oh if you guys lose we're gonna delete the looney tunes and i'm like Oh, so the, this is this is where uh, David Zaslav got all his ideas. Okay, <laughs> uh. that's that's another thing. Is like this this whole movie is like, oh, look how cool and good Warner Brothers is, and then like immediately after this, immediately after this, Warner Brothers became like the most shit company. Fuck David Zaslav. They really fucking did unequivocally fuck david zoslov probably the worst like person for the movie industry right now i'm not gonna say the worst person in the movie industry there are like pretty disgusting people in the movie industry but they're not like fucking movies as bad as david zoslov is right now as far as we know david didn't visit a certain island okay but yeah like it's kind of like I think this is going to be a rare occurrence of, like, we're doing Disney versus Warner Brothers, uh, where Disney is, like, so f- much, so much further ahead of them. Because, again, I'm, you know, I'm going to compliment Ralph Breaks the Internet again. It's not, it's weird to compliment a movie for doing the bare, like, the bare minimum, but it did do the bare minimum. There is, a, like, emotional climax. They, like, there's this, like, insecurity monster made out of all these Ralphs, and it's dumb, and it's not that well, like... It's not, it's, they're, they're painting it as way more emotional than it really is. It's kind of just dumb to look at. And this movie is like painting it as a really sad and dramatic scene, but at least they fucking tried to do something. At least they actually tried to give something Space Jam Legacy. Like the only emotional beat this movie tries to have is with, uh, LeBron and his son, where the message is so clear the first time they talk to each other. And it feels like LeBron, because his uh, wife talks to him, understands what the message of the movie is at the beginning. Like, he's kind of being, uh, he's being a little bit supportive of his son. He's not completely shutting him down. He's playing his game. He's, when the game crashes, he gives him, like, a pep talk saying, you just got to keep trying. You know, he's not really that bad of a dad. He's uh, a little unsure. Like, his son tells him about going to one and going to, like, this E3 camp, Rip E3. And this is the first time LeBron's hearing about it, so LeBron has something to say about that. That's not, like, a horrible thing to do. It wasn't 100% no, you're not doing this end of story. It was like, you're fucking dropping this on me now? And then the other beat is yeah. Bugs, Bugs loves his family. The, it, the Looney Tunes, they're his family. Even though, like, half of these characters are people he mercilessly beats the shit out of. That's his family. We're making it a family movie now. Bugs loves his family. And that's not done well at all either. The glitch at the end is him them trying to do an emotional beat. Don't has there ever been a fucking Looney Tunes movie that tried to do like something emotional with bugs? That's not the character you do that with. Yeah. Like Space Jam One and Back in Action did not like they both knew better. Well, yeah, I mean those are both vastly better movies than this. Yeah. Say whatever you want about them. They they at least even if they didn't have the best portrayal of Bugs, obviously it's not going to be in any any either of those. Like, there's so many classic shorts that exist, but uh, but they at least understood the character to some degree. I think they made him a little too cocky in both those movies. I think that they like they try to make Bugs a little too cool in those, but that is so much better than what they do here. 
Yeah, and that doesn't even... It doesn't even have that much of a payoff. It's just like... Okay, well, now Bugs has his people back together. Really, the only... The, the reason that's there is so that Bugs gets exclusively Looney Tunes for he and LeBron's team, where LeBron is pitching like, oh yeah, let's get like Superman and King Kong and Harry Potter to be on our team. And and then Bugs is like, no, we're just getting Looney Tunes because I miss them. That is the only reason it's in the movie. It almost feels like they're trying to pull something similar to what that Muppets movie back, I think it was like 2011 did. But one, the Looney Tunes have appeared in shit recently, you know? They had multiple TV yes. shows, they sold shorts. It has not been, like, the Muppets, they made a big deal out of that because the Muppets were, like, really unpopular for a long time. They went from being this huge thing to fucking nothing. The movie was very self-aware of that. Two, Kermit is a character you can be funny with and heartfelt with. He is, he is a character that is written that way. Bugs, you don't make him... If you're gonna make us anything of Bugs, like, sad or heartwarming, it's part of the joke. It's like the opera episode, you know? It's like... He's just not the character you do that stuff with. There are plenty of characters you can do that stuff with. Bugs is not one of them. I'm not even sure if there's plenty of Looney Tunes characters you can do that with, though. That's not to say that. It's just Looney Tunes... Looney Tunes didn't do drama. <laughs> you know, they didn't do family stuff. And I'm not like... I, I love stuff like that if it's done with the right characters. The you just don't... No, the Looney... You don't... You do that with Mickey and his friends. You don't do that with the fucking Looney Tunes. <laughs> All right. New Space Jam movie where they include Mickey Mouse because he's public domain. <laughs> <laughs> they should do something with that. That'd be that's like <laughs> such a that's such a funny th opportunity. I'm. I mean, we're like two years from Bugs being public domain, so so get on it. And then Disney can do it right back to them. Uh I let's talk about the cast. All right, we we. <laughs> There's a bit to talk about. I've been about. on this one a little while. Yeah. LeBron James, uh, we we agreed, like, kind of did better than uh, Michael Jordan did. He did, a, he was, a, he's a better actor. No, yeah, not by a lot, but, like, he, he, there's a scene where he has, like, a heart-to-heart -heart with his son, and I'm like, okay, okay, I don't, I don't think Michael Jordan had the range for this. He's just, like, not, like, I mean, when he, and to be fair, like... Technology has improved. There's more experience doing this, but when there's scenes where he has to look at the Looney Tunes and engage with them, he does kind of look like he's actually engaging with them. Or Michael Jordan looks like he's staring off into space. Most of those scenes, Michael Jordan's a better person for the movie, though. Honestly, just because, but that was something we talked about a lot during the start of the movie. Is that Michael Jordan like he just belongs in Space Jam? You know, it makes it made too much sense, especially with the commercials that they did. Yeah. Where, where with LeBron James, it's not even that LeBron James isn't the right choice. It's that it's it's just that Space Jam Two shouldn't exist. There's no one else that you can put into that role. <laughs> yeah, we we were talking about this earlier because Chris was with us and Chris was talking about like I don't know who else would you put in this and it, and we we were all kind of like it's it's one of those cases like like we said this in uh, the last Airbender review. You kind of just shouldn't have made the movie. <laughs> right. Like, there's there's nothing... There's no one in the NBA who stacks up to Michael Jordan. And there's really no reason to do a Space Jam 2. Honestly, I, I feel like there is less reason to do a Space Jam 2 than there was to do Last Airbender. Uh, I kind of... I, I did, like, the most pointless movies of the year, and I kind of stopped after 2020. If I had done this in 2021, this movie would have been number one. There is not a doubt in my mind that Space Jam 2 A New Legacy was the most pointless movie of 2021. If you put all of them together, would Space Jam Legacy be number one? Like, you just put all the years you did it together. Because Space Jam Legacy would at least be no. in the top ten, right? Probably. But it would not be number one against the Emoji movie. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I actually think it's a little hard to say, but it, the Emoji movie's a good competitor for Space Jam and New Legacy. Because I think that both have an equal right to exist. I, I, I am talking purely about, like, how pointless of a movie this is. And, like, there is some intuition behind this. It's like, 90s nostalgia is at its height... 
People loved Space Jam in the 90s. Let's just do another Space Jam. Yeah, fair enough. Don Cheadle plays a big role in this. He's... You know, I, mean, I liked he's, Don Cheadle well enough in this. He's, try, he's at least trying. He is always trying. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Don Cheadle's a good actor. I respect Don Cheadle in spite of this. Yeah, script doesn't give him anything to work with, but he's, like, trying to sound very animated in it. We got, uh... We got Cedric Joe playing uh, LeBron James's son, Dominic James, who is not a real person. <laughs> LeBron James has like three sons None of them are named Dominic And I mean Michael Jordan's kids didn't play themselves In Space Jam But Michael Jordan's kids Did not have a major role in that story Right We've got the return of Sarah Silverman again Sarah, Sarah Silverman Joins Clint Howard Rob Schneider and Adam Sandler In Actors Who Have Appeared More than twice <laughs> And she maybe even gets a little bit of bonus points just for being in both movies in this matchup. <laughs> but since no one else, she is the only person who has three. Sandler and Schneider both have four and Howard has five, so... Yeah. Plus Sandler and uh, Rob Schneider also appeared back to back. Yeah, yes. They both had their own dedicated episodes. Her and Steven Yen, they were in this, but they... Neither of them got the opportunity to do anything funny. They were just in a office. It's yeah, kind of weird they, they that were, they got them. They, they were at, like, the very beginning of the movie. And I'd get it if they had, like, a funny line or something, but they, they really don't. They're just kind of there. They do have, like, established voice actors playing most of the characters. You had Jeff Bergman as Bugs and a lot of the other guys. Eric Bouza. Bouza. Bouza? Eric Bowser is like uh, Daffy and Porky and some of the other characters. I mean, you've got Candy Milo as Granny, and she is worth shouting out specifically because she played Nick on Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> hey. So Nick is in this movie. Gabriel Iglesias plays Speedy Gonzalez, <laughs> the, the, the comedian. Is he one of the more controversial comedians, or am I thinking of someone else? No, not really. Okay. His whole bit is that he's fat and Mexican. Well, uh, that's what I'm thinking. Not, like, pr problematic in the sense he did something bad, but just, like, people say his humor is lowbrow and offensive. I I don't know anyone who says his humor is offensive, but I, I do think most people consider him, like, sort of not that funny. Okay. That might be what I'm thinking about. He seems like a weird casting choice, and and this is only speculation from me. I am not saying that this is for sure the case, but I recall there being talks about a Speedy Gonzalez movie. Like, Warner Brothers wanted to make a movie specifically focused on Speedy Gonzalez, and that never happened. So I almost wonder if he wasn't, like, somehow attached to the Speedy Gonzalez movie before it got scrapped, and they were just like, Okay, but, uh, hey, you can come play Speedy in, uh, Space Jam 2. How's that? Yeah. Yeah, that's probably... that sounds about right. Similarly, they got Zendaya to play Lola. It's about to say this. that. I like Zendaya. I like her a lot, actually. But what a nothing fucking character in this! Like they, she doesn't. She. It's like such a nothing performance. But they also gave her nothing to work with. They, they are trying to right the wrongs of the Lola from the first Space Jam, where they just treated her like you know a sex symbol. I, I, I get wanting to go back on that. I understand not everybody was happy with that decision, but. I uh, you know what I I I have no stake in that. Uh, whatever if they want to make her a better character, go for it. I think they failed. I mean, she's not like yeah, she's not a sex symbol anymore, but she's really boring. And they have this TV show version of her, which everybody really liked because they made her funny. They gave yeah. her a personality. She's allowed to be a funny character, like a Looney Tunes character should be. Yeah, I don't know. I f I, I I almost. Like, I get the sex symbol thing. I get, I get that, like, yeah, she was, like, deliberately sexy in the first movie. But, like, there was also, like, an element of, like, 90s-style girl power to, to that character. That's and true. this is just, like, 2010s-style girl power. 
applied to the same character. Where, yeah, the, the Kristen Wiig version of Lola Bunny from the show, I think, like, was a funny character who got to be l the focus of, like, a lot of jokes, even. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll say this, too. Like, uh, you know who she reminds me of? Lola Bunny in the first one. Who? She reminds me of Barbed Wire. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody calls me Doll. It, what what is it? What is the name that she doesn't like in Space Jam? Is it Toots or is it or is it Doll? It's Doll. Oh, okay. In Space Jam, it's Doll. I think it's Babe. Oh, Babe. It's Barb Babe and Barbed Wire. Yeah. Yeah. Like I'm gonna say it. I don't. I don't know if this is a controversial thing to say. I honestly don't think it is. Uh, better in the first Space Jam. There is at least like a personality. It's not. I get why they wanted to correct that. I get why there's some people who might not like that. But yeah, it, it's it's a product of its time. There's at least a personality there. She does nothing in this fucking movie. I I kind of think they're pretty equal. I think they're on equal footing. Oh, I just thought she, I just thought she was so fucking bland in this movie. Yeah, but and it's I not mean, like she's but, great like, again. Think... Not good in the first one. Not good in the first one. But I think that it's like at least it's kind of playing into the movie that Space Jam was. You know, I I suppose I suppose you you have me there. Uh, they didn't do like a really lame forced romance between her and Bugs in this one. That's true. That's true. I I'll give you that, and I'll give you that one where he like shoves her out of the way exactly once, and all of a sudden she's like. I have to marry this man. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think she's nothing in this one. And that's, that's you know, that's a shame. But to be fair, that's a lot of them in this one. That's kind of porky in this one. He doesn't even follow his character traits a lot of the time. You mentioned it. He does something very out of character. Yeah, he does. He, he, he just doesn't feel like porky in this movie, you know? I feel like Wiley, Coyote, and uh, Daffy, aside from having the better 3D models, I think they're also more in character. I like Daffy instead of actually competing in the game. He just dresses up in a suit and is like acting like a coach, just shouting at everybody that that I thought that was like a funny idea. Uh, Wiley Coyote has that machine that duplicates the basketballs and then accidentally duplicates himself. I thought that was an OK bet. I think again, and I, again, I just think that they continue to look all right, even though they're 3D models, like their textures weren't distracting. I think that they blended a lot better where bugs it's just it's way too much detail for his character to have daffy i think because it's like a black texture i don't know the details are less noticeable because it's all blending in a lot better yeah where bugs you're seeing like yeah, every no, individual fur and it just it doesn't it just doesn't look right the fur looks wrong lil rel howery shows up as himself to like commentate on the basketball game yeah he's I mean, he's a funny person, not in this movie. <laughs> no, there's not really a lot of funny people. I mean, there's funny people in this movie, but they're not a lot of, like, people actually saying funny things in this. Yeah. Um, I guess we could talk about the Goon Squad a little bit, because, like the Monstars, they do, like, take their abilities from real basketball players, but they're progressive in this one, so there's two WNBA players. What? Don't you love the WNBA? Don't don't you know all of the famous players from the WNBA? I I I like them so much. I think that there should be three of them, but not not until like twenty forty when they finally make Space Jam three. Yeah, yeah, a, a newer legacy. <laughs> if they want to put a third one in there, I'm, I'm all for it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I have I don't have a lot to say about them. It kind of felt like they were mixing both the villains of the first movie with that bit they did about the basketball players in the first movie, which I actually thought was like one of the funniest jokes in the first movie. And it's so separated from from Michael Jordan and the rest of the Looney Tunes. Yeah. No. I I I I the Goon Squad is so much lamer than the Monstars. The Monstars have, like, a lot going on. Like, I mean, the Monstars are, like, a huge part of the main conflict. In this one, like, the main conflict stems from Al G. Rhythm, and the Goon Squad just sort of show up at the halfway point when they're starting the basketball game. And at, at first I didn't even realize they were supposed to be based on, like, the real NBA players that, like... Uh, LeBron's son had put into his game. Right. 
it, t- it took me a second to realize, like, oh, it's it's all the guys from before. Okay. Yeah. They don't really, yeah, they don't really explain it that well. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, you can tell that's what they're doing, but they don't like, for what they like to over explain in this movie, maybe they could have done that a little better. But I'll say this too. Uh, you know what we should talk about with this movie? Um, we should talk about the jams. Cause you mentioned you liked, that's a big part of the first Space Jam is it had like a really memorable soundtrack. This one, you said that there was like 10 seconds of a song they used that you really like. Was there a second song in this movie that you liked? Or remember uh, at the very least. I mean, in fairness, the first song, old ass song from the nineties, and then yeah, there's basically nothing else. Like this, the the soundtrack to this film does not even hold a candle to the first Space Jam. You know, the first Space Jam had like. Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. There was nothing on that level in this movie. Right. Like, the jams, the jams were severely lacking in this one. The space was also kind of lacking. I suppose they fly around in space in the server-verse, but, like... It's not a big part of the movie at all. Yeah, no, space is not really a big part of this one, and j- the jams were severely lacking. So yeah, it's just a very lame movie, and I don't really know. I don't really, I don't even think that there's any, I don't think that there's anyone who worked on this that would have their feelings hurt by that being said about it, because I don't think anyone gave a shit. No. I think this is an algorithm movie. I think that they're kind of criticizing Don Cheadle's character, despite knowing very well that's what they are. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Ralph Breaks the Internet, maybe there was a little bit of, like, a resemblance of what they wanted to do in there that just got st- lost between a bunch of Disney execs saying, actually, Wreck-It Ralph 2 is gonna be this, where this one, it's just, I don't think that there was ever any intention of making this something good. Yeah, ha- have we made it to that part of the evening? Mm-hmm. Because... Here's the thing. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind that Wreck-It Ralph 2 is the better movie of these two. It is it is a bad sequel, but I don't know. There's like stuff in it that's kind of okay. Space Jam 2 is just a fucking travesty. It's it's like a monument to everything wrong with with cinema as it currently exists. That said, if I was going to watch one of these movies again, I probably would watch Space Jam 2 because I am kind of fascinated by how bad it is. <sighs> I, You know what? Respect to you for that, but for me, absolutely fucking not. <laughs> I, uh, I, I I can't, like, I actually got to make this one clear. This is what, in terms of, like, the movies we talk about on the show, I really thought, like, my opinion on these two was going to stay the same. I I hate Space Jam, and like, I mean, I really hate it. Like, not in a way where it's like, oh, I, I get what you mean by it being a fascinatingly bad movie, but I, I, if it wasn't paced so poorly, why is it almost two hours long? I got so bored out of my mind watching this. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm I, not with you on that, but respect. I, I I do hear where you're coming from. Is that your vote? Uh, yeah, my, my vote is for Ralph Breaks the Internet. Oh, okay. Uh, I know sometimes it's like a battle between trying to be objective, but also like what you would prefer to watch again. Because I think that's good to consider no, both. No, no. In this case, it's 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 undoubtedly Ralph Breaks the Internet. I would watch Ralph Breaks the Internet again before I watched the Space Yeah, Jam. okay. I, 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 I assumed that's what you were voting for. <laughs> I mean, maybe if Space Jam, A New Legacy, had Sonic in it. I don't know, but... This, I think, is our most popular poll. We got 130 votes on this one. Damn! And with 62% of the vote, it's Ralph Breaks the Internet. The audience is with us. And this one, more than any other matchup, got a bunch of comments that were like, no, neither of these. <laughs> there we go. Uh, this is like picking your poison, meh, Space Jam 2. Uh, the better of two very bad things is still very bad, and trick question, both movies are bad. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you guys. I, I, I'm i with you, I'm with you. I hear you guys. Yeah, yeah, no, we're, we, we hear you. Ne- neither of these movies are, are good, but of the two, 
one has Sonic. It's pretty unanimous. <laughs> Ralph breaks the internet wins. Uh, because it has Sonic, yes, obviously. <laughs> he got, like I said, he, he got a little promotion in the sequel. He wasn't just talking on a fucking shitty screen in the sequel. He got two speaking lines where he was actually engaging with Ralph. You know, like, Sonic, Sonic was, like, fucking too cool for Ralph in the first movie. In the sequel, it's like they're buddies, you know? Yeah, he, he even tells Ralph what the internet's like. Because Sonic sure knows the internet. I think the third movie should be all about Sonic, like Ralph plays Sonic 06. Oh, like Jesse Pinkman. Yeah. He plays Sonic 06 and has the time of his fucking life. Next time on Hollow Victories, in 1997, we were gloriously gifted with not one, but two comic book movies that at last starred a black character, and neither of them were very well reviewed. Fortunately, the year after that we got Blade and everything was right again, but from 97, we got Spawn vs. Steel. And Michael doesn't know this yet, but we're actually having a guest on this episode. This matchup was Chris's idea, and I told her, this was your idea, you gotta be on the episode. <laughs> so we'll have Chris in the next episode. Uh, is this Chris's second time, or? Uh, second. I think okay. this is Chris's second appearance. Okay. Alright, Chris, uh, this one's all on you. Also... Uh, incidentally, this just so happens to be our 32nd episode, which means we, we now have 32 winners. So at some point in the month of February, I want us to do a live stream of Hollow Victories, The Gauntlet, where we stack up all 32 movies against each other. That's, that is just enough for a bracket. So all 32 Hollow Victories movies are going to be going head-to-head -head on the live yeah. stream at some point. All right. That sounds like fun. You can probably get, like, some sort of, like, simulator online, like, where you can, like, actually have, like, a visual for it. Yeah. No, I, I, I got to build some visuals for it. Yeah. All right, neat. Yeah. Uh, 32 episodes. Damn. Well, 32. Yeah, no, 32 episodes. I'm looking forward to seeing Steel and Spawn, because I've, I've heard of both of them. I've never actually watched either of them. Spawn, I've saw, I saw, I read one of the comics, and I saw the first season of the animated show they did, and I liked that a lot, but never got to the second season. All right. Well, uh, do you have anything else? If you want to make a movie, make a movie and not a product, and uh, I'll be a little nicer to you. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt and say, hey, maybe you did, maybe, like, it wasn't that good, but, you know, there's this, this, and this, and I feel... Very little symp sympathy for these two movies. <laughs> Ralph a little more than Space Jam. <laughs> True that. I mean, Ralph almost feels like something that got like hijacked by the studio and ruined. Yeah. Where Space Jam 2 was always a studio thing. <laughs> True. And with that, until next time, for my co-host Michael Shadakel, I am Matt Presence. We'll see you in the next one. It's a long fucking episode, jeez.